Almost all businesses depend on some type of lift truck to address the wide variety of material handling requirements in industry today. Narrow aisle lift trucks are just one of the many different kinds of lift trucks available, and they offer specialized solutions in a variety of applications. Operating a narrow aisle lift truck safely requires skill and experience. Therefore, only trained and authorized personnel may use them. Lift truck operations involve more than the individual operator, truck, and operating environment. For optimum performance and safety, it requires all of these factors to work together as a team. The purpose of this video is to familiarize you with the distinct features, benefits, and operating procedures of these particular trucks to help ensure that all of those who operate them are instructed on how to use them safely. These trucks have the capability to turn in tight aisles and restricted spaces. Generally, these are able to lift loads exceeding 28 feet, and a fully loaded truck can weigh more than 12,000 pounds. As with all lift trucks, they should only be operated by authorized personnel who have received proper training. It is important that you not only view this video, but study the operating manual that accompanied your narrow aisle lift truck you must be sure that you have access to and understand any instructions that are specific to your individual unit, workplace, and application. Safety isn't something that anyone sets out to ignore, but tight schedules, heavy equipment, pedestrian traffic, and congested workspace can sometimes compromise safety. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, estimates there are approximately 68,000 accidents involving lift trucks every year. Of these, over 100 people are killed. A five-year study shows how the accidents break down in terms of causes. 25% tip over. 19% personnel are struck by a powered industrial truck. 14% personnel are struck by a falling load. 12% employee falls off elevated forks. 7% lift truck runs off loading dock or other surface. 6% lift truck is improperly maintained. In order to prevent further accidents, OSHA requires that employers give proper equipment-specific training to all of their lift truck operators. A narrow aisle lift truck uses the same principles of stability as a seesaw, two weights balanced on opposite sides of a pivot point. This mother must think about load distribution and center of gravity just to keep this teeter-totter moving. Operators must also understand the forces that can unbalance a lift truck. If you don't keep all four wheels on the ground, you or someone around you can be killed or seriously injured. A lift truck works much like a teeter-totter. The heavy counterweight on the back keeps the rear wheels on the ground. As you can see from this diagram, the front wheels act as a fulcrum between the counterweight and the load. Just like the pivot point of a teeter-totter, it's the same principle of leverage that allows a young child to lift her mother. Now, let's look at loads. The load center is the distance from the face of the forks to the center of gravity of the load. Every object has a center of gravity. These three loads are all the same weight, but because of their different shape, they have a different center of gravity or balance point. When a lift truck picks up a load, the center of gravity of the truck and the center of gravity of the load will produce the combined center of gravity. 
the combined center of gravity will move in the same direction that the load moves. A typical narrow aisle reach truck has a four-point suspension system. This forms a stability trapezoid base. With the added dimensions of lift height, it forms a three-dimensional triangle similar to a pyramid. When the combined center of gravity stays within the stability pyramid, the truck is stable. If you move the center of gravity forward of the stability pyramid, as when a load is too heavy or too high, the truck will tip forward. By law, every type of lift truck must have a nameplate, which shows the maximum weight it is allowed to lift. For example, this truck can lift 3,000 pounds based on the load having a 24-inch load center at 209 inches. The higher the lift, the lower the capacity. As the plate shows, this truck will only lift 2,700 pounds to a 211-inch lift height. Be sure that the correct battery is used since an unsuitable battery weight will affect the stability of the truck. As stated already, the load center is the distance from the face of the forks to the center of gravity of the load. In this example, this 3,000 pound capacity truck with a 24 inch load center will attempt to lift this 3,000 pound load. Due to the unusual shape of the load, the center of gravity of the load is 36 inches from the face of the forks. Notice how the rear wheels lift off the ground because the capacity of the truck has been exceeded. However, if the truck lifts the load from the opposite side, the center of gravity of the load is only 18 inches from the face of the forks. This load can now be safely lifted. Order pickers are a counterbalance truck also. However, they have only three wheels. This forms a stability triangle. Understanding the principle of lateral stability will reduce the chances of your truck falling over sideways. What do you think? Is a lift truck more stable with a load or without while turning? As this truck turns with a load, the combined center of gravity moves towards the edge of the stability triangle. Now, watch what happens when we complete a similar turn, this time without a load. Notice that the center of gravity is much closer to the edge of the stability triangle. The closer it is, the less it takes for the truck to become unbalanced and tip over. That is why an unloaded truck should be operated just as carefully as a loaded truck when cornering. Let's consider some of the main causes of tip overs. Overloading. Traveling with the load elevated. Off-center or unstable loads excessive speed, sharp turns, uneven or slippery surfaces, and falling from docks, dock plates, trucks, or trailers. One of the most serious accidents a lift truck operator can experience is a tip over. In the event you experience such a situation, you need to know what to do. With a counterbalance sit-down truck, the operator is instructed to stay with the truck when it tips over. Stand-up lift trucks are different. Safety authorities such as OSHA state, when the stand-up rider tips over laterally, the operator must be trained to step off the vehicle toward the rear of the vehicle. In this example, the reach truck is turning a corner too fast with the load raised. As the truck begins to tip, the operator senses this emergency situation and steps out of the operator compartment. In this next situation, the reach truck is approaching the loading dock too quickly and slides on a wet surface. Unable to stop, the truck continues over the edge. The operator senses this emergency situation and steps out of the operator compartment. In the event your stand-up lift truck is involved in a tip-over or off-the-dock accident, you can be severely injured or killed. To minimize your risk of injury, it is recommended that you step off the rear of and away from your stand-up truck. When a narrow aisle lift truck is in motion, forces such as lifting, turning, and stopping can cause the combined center of gravity to move outside the stability pyramid, causing the truck to tip over. Be sure to use slow and gradual maneuvers 
when operating a narrow aisle lift truck. Keeping a narrow aisle lift truck balanced and under control is the mark of an experienced and safe professional operator. Before every takeoff, airline pilots perform a pre-operational inspection. It is the operator's responsibility to inspect the truck and fill out the daily driver checklist at the beginning of each shift. Never use the truck if it is damaged or has faults that would prevent it from being used safely and report any concerns to your supervisor. To begin your inspection, look over the truck carefully and be particularly alert for anything unusual or dangerous, such as loose bolts or cracked wells. Now, with the key in the off position, make the following inspections. Start at the battery and work yourself around the truck. Using the emergency brake, disconnect and inspect the battery connectors and cables to see that they are in good shape. Make sure that the battery gates are in place. A dislodged battery can result in a serious accident. Inspect the straddle arms and frame to ensure that there are no obvious weld cracks. Check the wheels for any signs of chunking or gouges. Is there any wire, plastic strapping, string, or foreign objects lodged behind the wheel? The presence of any of these things can be the cause of injury or costly damage. These small load wheels carry a lot of weight. When the truck is fully loaded, over 8,000 pounds is distributed over these wheels. Inspect the hydraulic lift cylinders. They must be free from leaking fluid. Hydraulic fluid can easily cause someone to slip or fall. Inspect the hose fittings around the mast, as this is where the leaks most often start. Make sure that the mast channels are free of foreign objects, such as pieces of wood or wire. Equal tension in the lift chains is important. This will prevent uneven lifting. Verify that the chain is well lubricated. Check the fork carriage to be sure that the forks are positioned properly and locked in place. The forks must be level and one fork tip must not be higher than the other. Check all guards, especially the overhead guard and load back rest extension to be sure that they are securely in place. Ensure that all safety and warning decals on the truck are clearly visible and able to be read. Now, with the key in the on position and with the dead man foot brake released, continue with the following inspections. Ensure that the controls move easily and that the brakes work properly. Check the plugging function. The brake pedal must stop the truck quickly when your foot is lifted. If it doesn't, the brakes are not functioning properly and the truck should be taken out of operation until it is repaired. Check that the steering moves smoothly without any play. Operate the lift, reach, side shift, and tilt mechanisms to ensure that they are functioning smoothly. Activate the lift control and fully raise and lower the forks to ensure free movement of the mass. Tilt the forks up and down making sure that all hydraulic movements are smooth and operational. On an order picker, check the condition of the safety tether. Test the horn and lights. When finished, turn the key to the off position, look under the truck to check for any oil leaks. Complete a written report and submit it to your supervisor.
Finally, refer to your owner's manual for any additional information you may require. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and be particularly attentive to the battery care section. The life of a battery and the lift truck motor and controls can be severely shortened by not following the manufacturer's instructions on charging and maintaining the battery. On the late shift, while a lift truck was being charged, a maintenance man was repairing some equipment. Not knowing that charging batteries give off dangerous hydrogen gas, he began grinding a piece of metal. The sparks began flying toward the battery area. One half of the plant burnt to the ground before the fire was put out. The typical industrial battery is a series of individual cells joined together by lead connectors. Each cell has a positive and negative post. The cell is filled with a solution of sulfuric acid and water called electrolyte. Each cell generates approximately two volts of electricity. When it's time to recharge the battery, park your narrow aisle lift truck with the brake on. Hydrogen is a highly flammable gas and for this reason, batteries must only be charged in well-ventilated areas. Make sure that there is no smoking or open flames in the area. Turn the key switch off. Unplug the battery connector from the truck and attach the charger connector to the battery, never to the truck. Check the cables for wear and the connectors for damage. Turn on the charger following the manufacturer's instruction. When the charging process is complete, always turn the charger off before unplugging the connectors. When working around batteries, be sure to wear the appropriate personal protective equipment, safety glasses and gloves, a rubber apron, and steel-toed safety shoes should always be worn when working around any powered equipment. Make sure that there is an eye wash station nearby. If acid does get into your eyes, go immediately to the eye wash station and flush the affected area for at least 15 minutes, then seek medical attention. Narrow aisle lift trucks use a slide to remove the battery. To do this, remove the safety gate and place the safety gate in the operator compartment so you cannot operate the truck without it. Line up the battery tray of the narrow aisle lift truck with the empty roller storage tray and roll the battery out of the truck. After charging, remove the caps of three or four cells to determine the electrolyte level. Only a flashlight should be used to look into the cells, never a match or lighter. When the battery is fully charged, the electrolyte has a high acid content. This can be tested with a hydrometer. By testing a small sample of electrolyte, you can determine how much energy is in the cell. This process will also locate bad cells in a battery. A fully charged specific gravity reading should be 1.290. As the battery is discharged, the acid level becomes weaker. A discharged battery will read approximately 1.120 on the hydrometer. Take hydrometer readings of the cells and record the findings. Look for large differences between cells and report any irregularities. To avoid acid spills, only add water after charging. Adding too much water before will cause overflow during charging and can create a hazardous spill. If electrolyte does escape, it must be neutralized with baking soda and water. Roll the battery into place and close the safety gate. Finally, connect the battery cable. Battery care must not be overlooked. The useful life of a battery can be extended with a little attention and proper care.
As an operator of a narrow aisle lift truck, your safety, the safety of your load, and the people around you should always be your main priority. Observing safety guidelines will enable you to operate your truck in an efficient and safe manner. Proper foot protection, such as approved safety footwear, is always recommended when working in and around any motorized industrial lift trucks. Some applications may also require hard hats, eye protection, or a safety harness to be worn. Check with your supervisor to find out if your specific application requires the use of additional safety equipment. Before using a narrow aisle lift truck on the job, you must take the time required to become familiar with it. Learn to gauge the clearance between your truck and the objects around it, and slowly practice maneuvering in an open area before driving it in a congested one. Avoid sudden stops and sharp turns, otherwise you may lose your load, which can cause injury. All movements should be controlled and gradual, not quick or erratic. Keep in mind that the momentum of the narrow aisle truck can make it difficult to change its direction or speed. Some other rules for operating safely are, never dismount the truck until it is fully stopped. Never put your hands, head or feet outside the confines of the truck while operating. When traveling, make sure that the forks are lowered, whether loaded or unloaded. And to park, you must lower the forks completely and turn the key to the off position. Never park where you are blocking aisles, doorways, fire exits, firefighting equipment, or material that any other worker may need. On January 7th, Alan was filling an order. Not paying attention, he parked his truck with the forks at eye level. At the same time, Janessa, a co-worker, walked around the corner. Janessa lost the sight in her right eye. There are two ways in which to stop the narrow aisle truck. By plugging or by using the foot brake. Slowing down by reversing direction is referred to as plugging and will not damage the drive system. The brakes are designed to stop the truck in a shorter distance than plugging. Always travel at a speed that will allow you to stop safely. Narrow aisle trucks need to be highly maneuverable to work in tight places, which is why they steer from the rear. Watch out for tail swing when traveling forward. When cornering, keep the front load wheels close to the inside aisle and start turning. This will allow room for the rear end to swing out in the opposite direction. Before you pick up a load, make sure that your forks are spread as far apart as possible for maximum support of the load and that they are long enough to stabilize the load. Never pick up a load that looks or feels unbalanced and ensure that the load is fully supported by the forks and the backrest. Make certain that you only handle loads that are within the maximum rated capacity as stated on the nameplate of your narrow aisle truck. Check all pallets to be sure that they're free from defects or damage and take the faulty or broken ones out of service to be repaired. Be sure the load is against the load backrest extension with the forks tilted slightly back. While traveling, the forks should be retracted and the load carried should be as low as possible from the ground. If the load is too large, travel carefully in reverse and use a fellow employee as a guide if necessary. Keep in mind that 14% of all lift truck fatalities involve someone being struck by a falling load. Never reach through the mass to reposition the load. Instead, get off the truck and make adjustments. Bumps, wet, rough, or uneven floor surfaces and debris demand your full attention. Any of these can upset your load or unbalance your lift truck. You must drive with extra caution when in this type of environment. If you notice any debris on the floor, stop your truck, pick up the debris, and put it in the proper container. Wet or oily floors can also be a hazard. 
braking and steering can become greatly reduced or non-existent. Therefore, only operate on clean, dry floors. To remove a pallet out of a rack position, the following steps should be taken. Line up the truck with the position of the pallet so that the truck is square and is approximately 12 inches back from the rack. Only raise the forks when your truck is in position. Keep forks level and extend reach mechanism until the front face of the forks reaches the pallet. Lift the forks just enough to clear the pallet off the rack. Ensure that the far end of the load is fully supported. This can be accomplished by a slight upward tilt. Do not lift too high or you could crush the load on the rack above. Retract the reach mechanism and lower when the load is completely clear of the rack. To place a pallet into a rack, follow these steps. Make sure the path is clear and tell anyone nearby to stand away because you will be lifting. Before lifting, you should do a quick mental check to question things such as weight of the load, whether the load is stacked securely, and whether or not it will fit into the rack. Turn the narrow aisle lift truck slowly to align with the opening in the rack. Raise the forks to the correct height. Extend the reach mechanism, remove back tilt, and lower the load carefully. Retract the forks, then lower while remaining at a complete stop. Some operators feel it is acceptable to lift or lower the load while they are traveling. This is absolutely wrong. The truck must be completely stopped. Moving a load while in motion affects your stability, reduces visibility, and increases the chances of hitting overhead objects such as sprinklers or heating systems. Watch for low doorways and debris that can upset your load. Narrow aisle lift trucks are not normally intended for operation on a grade. It is recommended that you consult the manufacturer's operating procedures. If you must operate your narrow aisle truck on a ramp or incline, it requires extra caution and care. Never turn on a ramp and never drive along the edge of ramps, raised docks or platforms as this can cause a tip over. While carrying a load, the load should be upgrade when going up or going down. If the truck is not carrying a load, the fork should be downgrade when going up or going down. Never attempt to operate a narrow aisle truck on a ramp that is a grade of more than 10%. Loading docks are busy places for pedestrians and equipment. On average, a lift truck may pass over a dock a hundred thousand times a year, so there are plenty of chances for accidents to occur. Statistics show that over 7% of accidents happen in the loading dock area. Narrow aisle lift trucks are not designed to work on trailers. Counterbalance lift trucks or pallet trucks are better designed for this purpose. The tractor trailer must be safely secured against the dock. Its brakes must be engaged and wheel chocks must be properly installed. Lift truck operators are responsible for ensuring that the trailer is ready for safe loading or unloading. Once the tractor trailer is secured, carefully position the dock levelers in place. Make sure that there is proper lighting in the area. Poor lighting increases the chances of injury and or product damage. Inspect the floor of the trailer to ensure that it is in good condition and that the combined weight of the truck and load do not exceed the maximum weight capacity of the trailer. When backing up, stop at the end of the trailer and look both ways for pedestrian. Accidents on the dock may happen any day. By knowing the safety hazards in this area, you can make the loading dock a safe place to work. While Paul Baker was traveling down an aisle, 
He could not see Jeff at the electrical panel. Paul's load was high, but he did not take the time to turn his truck around and travel in reverse with the load properly positioned. Even though he looked side to side, his vision was greatly hindered. At just the wrong time, Jeff walked out in the aisle as Paul drove by. As a result, Jeff suffered a broken leg and mild concussion. When it comes to pedestrian safety, one rule always applies, and that is, pedestrians have the right of way. Other important rules to keep in mind. When approaching intersections or blind spots, stop and sound your horn to alert any people that might be in the area. Stop the vehicle completely at blind spots, look around, and check wall mirrors for oncoming traffic or pedestrians. Make sure that you always check behind you before you begin to back up. Never allow any passengers on your truck and never drive towards anyone, especially when they're up against a solid object. Order pickers have a few extra safety rules, and these are, always wear an approved safety harness every time you get on the truck. Never use the truck to load or unload racks, as this is not what they were designed for. Keep your hands inside the compartment while moving the truck. In case the electrical system does not work, a raised man can be lowered manually by releasing the safety down relief valve located here in the front compartment. Professional forklift operators take their job seriously and know the limitations of their equipment. We hope that you have found this video helpful to familiarize you with your narrow aisle truck and encourage you to use what you've learned to drive safely.